divided by. What I want, you got This holiday, you can gift more and spend less at TJ Maxx, Marshall, and Home Goods with more cheer to go around and more joy for your money. Meet the man behind Chip and Dale. A strip club for women. Outsider, underdog, immigrant. I made it. And I'm not going to blow it. You can't make an American dream almond without breaking a few eggs. Tomorrow on E.T., a royal Christmas without Harry and Meghan, the latest on the War of the Windsors. Another painful reminder for Harry that he's well and truly out of the royal family. Oh, Lord, the drama never ends. Now, we leave you with some leftover drama for the folks over on Bachelor in Paradise, Victoria and Johnny's broken engagement. Our Denny Directo is with them. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. You said you don't cook. You don't clean. What do you provide to a relationship? We both know that's not something I would say, and it didn't. Happening now. We're at the site of a migrant memorial where multiple crosses have been burned here on the southwest side. Coming up, we tell you what San Antonio police said about an arrest and the reasoning behind this. And one person now in custody after a truck connected to a shooting in the valley pulled over here in Bear County. What we know next. A dynamic system is headed for Texas just in time for Thanksgiving Day and even beyond. I'm going to talk about that, time out the rain for you, and let you know when the sky clears this weekend. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at 5, it's a series of crosses. Arson investigators arrest a woman who they say set fire to a memorial dedicated to more than 50 migrants who died this summer. That memorial was created days after investigators found those victims inside of a sweltering tractor trailer on the southwest side. RJ Marquez is live there at the site of that memorial on Quintana Road with the latest on what we know about this arrest. RJ. Yeah, Stephen, Myra, so this is where 53 crosses were placed over the summer to represent and honor each one of those victims. You guys just talked about it, that horrific human smuggling attempt back here on June 27th. And it stood here as a place for people to come and honor those victims, pray for those victims, and remember those individuals as well. And I'll step out of the way here real quick because there have been people out here that have been putting these crosses back up to replace those ones that have been burned. But there's still a lot of damage out here at this site, including this podium right here on the ground, which is where a place that people would absolutely come and pray for these individuals and keep their memories alive. So let's talk a little bit about this investigation. Investigators tell us that firefighters were called out here early yesterday morning around 6 a.m. to put out what they said was an unauthorized burn, and it turned out to be a fire at this memorial site. They investigated and then determined that 44-year-old Isalabanda was the person who set part of the memorial on fire. Investigators said that she admitted to setting the fire and that she was then later taken into custody. She did not say anything directly to our cameras earlier today. However, here's what investigators say that she told them. She did say that she was compelled by the Holy Spirit. Her reasoning was that she was doing God's work. This was a very important arrest for, for the city and for our division and for our fire department because of the nature of the, the heinous crime that was committed earlier this year. And Banda has been charged with arson, and we just spoke to a woman who has been cleaning and caring for this site since the crosses were placed here. Angel Olvera said that she found out about this fire early this morning and immediately came over and started to work on getting these crosses back up. These crosses were not harming anyone. These people that lost their lives here, they come to better themselves, to better, have a better future. Not to hurt anyone, just to better themselves. All right, and back out here live on Quintana Road, as you could see that some of these crosses have already been back, put back up here. Olvera told us earlier that she was told that six crosses were burned in total, and now they're trying to obviously figure out the names of the person that should be on these crosses. And the councilwoman here for District 4, Adriana Rocha Garcia, just got onto the scene as well. So we're going to talk to her in just a little bit and see what they have to say. Remember, guys, they had been trying to make this a, memor a permanent memorial site for those migrant victims. Victims. So there's been a lot of emotion here when it comes to this incident. But again, one arrest made here in this case. I'll send it back to you guys reporting live from the southwest side. RJ Marquez, Case at 12 News. All right, thank you, RJ. New at 5, a large DPS presence on the southeast side this afternoon as troopers pulled over this maroon pickup you're about to see. It was connected to a shooting in far Texas. There it is. That's in the valley. 
DPS says a trooper spotted the truck in Atascosa County, eventually pulled it over farther up I-37 near Bronig Lake Park in San Antonio. DPS confirms a handgun recovered from that truck. Three people inside all detained. One was arrested in connection to that shooting in FAR on a charge of disorderly conduct. The other two will be questioned. According to a news release from FAR, the truck and another vehicle met this morning at a convenience store shortly before shots were fired. No injuries were reported, though, at that scene in FAR. New developments in the case against San Antonio City Councilman Clayton Perry. We have now learned that San Antonio police filed a DWI charge with the Bear County District Attorney's Office. It will now be up to the DA to determine how to move forward in this case against the District 10 Councilman. We don't know when a decision on that could be made. So far, Perry is still only accused of failing to stop and give information after a crash. An arraignment hearing on that charge is set for December 12th. This comes more than two weeks after a crash that Perry admitted to being involved in. Police found Perry's Jeep running in his driveway and Perry lying confused in his backyard with a cut to his head. Officer body camera video raised suspicion of intoxication. The councilman has since been on a sabbatical from his position and says he is open to rehabilitation should a doctor recommend that. DPS asking for more than a billion dollars for a state of the art active shooter training facility, and it comes amid the failed response at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. That's according to our media partners at the Texas Tribune. If approved, taxpayers would need to pay nearly half a billion dollars as a down payment next year. Last month, DPS Director Steve McCraw was quoted as saying, You play like you practice, you need to practice in a real environment. End quote. Seven of his troopers under investigation by the department's inspector general for their roles in the response or lack of response at Robb Elementary. Some of the victims' families have called on McCraw to resign. He has refused. The U.S. continues to deal with mass shootings, two alone in just the past few days. The most recent one overnight in Chesapeake, Virginia. Police say a Walmart employee walked into a break room and shot six of his coworkers before turning the gun on himself. A motive for that shooting has not been released. Some San Antonio community members holding a vigil tonight for the victims killed in the Colorado Springs shooting. Five people killed, dozens more injured when an armed suspect fired into an LGBTQ plus club. Tonight's vigil will be held at the Rainbow Crosswalk on Main and Evergreen. It's going to begin at 6 p.m. The San Antonio Pride Center says they encourage the community to come together to lean on one another for support at this vigil. Meanwhile, the suspect in this case who did go to school here in San Antonio appeared in court today. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. For the first time, the suspect in the Colorado Springs mass shooting appearing Anderson before Aldrich. a judge via video link video? from jail. I find there is legal authority to hold Anderson Aldrich without bond. The 22 year old charged with the first degree murder of Ashley Paw, Daniel Aston, Raymond Green Vance, Kelly Loving and Derek Rump. We are going to be the voice for the victims in the courtroom and we will be fighting alongside them through this entire process. Dozens more were injured when police say the shooter opened fire at this LGBTQ club Saturday night. We were in the bar area right at the, the tables and uh, all of a sudden, you know, we just hear pop, 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 pop. James Law is a regular at Club Q. Yeah. He was shot along with his partner and sister. So I took a bullet in, in my arm and I just watch as several people in the bar area just go down, right? Um, I'm right next to my partner who gets shot in the leg, and then I just saw my sister on the ground. ABC News obtaining this Facebook post from Laura Vopel, the suspect's mother, seemingly concerned about her son's whereabouts in the hours before the shooting, saying, my son is missing. He took my phone and my debit card. We had plans and were so excited. She ends by saying her son told her to get ready to have the best night ever. The suspect was known to law enforcement. This ring camera video showing them surrendering to police after an alleged bomb threat against their own mother. The case was dismissed and the suspect's records sealed after the family refused to press charges, enabling the suspect to legally purchase an AR-style rifle. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Here at home, new photos released in the recovery of Eric Kahn, too. He's the teenager shot while sitting in a car by a San Antonio police officer who was fired and arrested shortly after. One picture shows him standing by the front door, but you can see that he still has bandages on his neck and his chest. His family says he still has a long road to recovery. Kahn, too, was shot in his stomach, liver, diaphragm, lungs, and arms. 
and spent seven weeks in the hospital. His family released a statement saying in part, quote, it means the world to us that we can spend Thanksgiving as a family outside of the hospital walls where we have lived since Eric was horribly injured. We are thankful for many blessings this week, end quote. The former San Antonio police officer charged with shooting Cantu was set for a preliminary hearing today. But since the judge won't be holding court this Thanksgiving week, that hearing will be rescheduled. The Thanksgiving travel getting busier, especially at airports. Nationwide, the TSA says they expect to screen as many as 2.5 million people. That would be a new high since we hit the coronavirus pandemic. So how are things going locally? How about San Antonio? Our Alyssa Cole joins us live. She is at San Antonio International. Alyssa, what have you seen out there? Yes, well, I can tell you right now here at departures, the pace is definitely picking up, but downstairs at arrivals. Now that's where the action is. It's very busy. Now, of course, we came inside here at the airport. The TSA lines are moving along. The ticket counters and planes are full outdoors at arrivals. You can hear and see police and airport security directing traffic flow to avoid that buildup. So, of course, if you're heading to the airport now or anytime soon, there may be a little bit of a wait, but it shouldn't be too long. We spoke with a few travelers and they tell us airports for connecting flights to San Antonio are filled and busy. I'm coming in from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I flew first. I was on United and then I was on American Airlines. I got a delay and uh, it was a whole mess. I had to call like 12 people. It was it was a it was a disaster, but um, I'm here now. Um, I'm really excited. The Huntsville Airport is pretty small, so it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too congested, but I flew, I connected to Dallas, so that was a lot more, you know, congested and everything. There's a lot more people. So, of course, if you're planning to catch a flight this evening, you'll definitely want to make sure you get here two hours earlier before your flight takes off. And if you're traveling in and out of the airport after the holiday, keep in mind Sunday is also expected to meet and even beat those pre-pandemic crowd levels. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Pack your patience. Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> All right, let's check out traffic right now. This is 281 South at Loop 410. We looked at the shot yesterday backed up. Mm -hmm. Not so much today. Yeah, this is a much better shot. 281 South of Loop 410 West. As a matter of fact, on a weekday, I'm not sure I've ever seen it this uncongested. So that's a good thing. And I will say if you're planning on hitting the roads for Thanksgiving, you know, sometime this evening or tonight, the earlier, the better. OK, the earlier, the better you can get on the roadways because fog and drizzle is going to set in pretty quickly again this evening, kind of like it did yesterday. You look at the radar, not a whole lot actually showing up, uh, but we're getting a few sprinkles here, especially out of Scosa County approaching Pleasanton right along 281 and near 37, just light sprinkle action. Locally, a few little sprinkles here and there, especially up in Comal County, but this is very light in nature and get ready for the drizzle and fog to start settling in along with rain on the way and big changes to the forecast with the latest data. I'm gonna sum it all up for you in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the news at five as you pack for the holidays. Keep a close eye on your bags. What caught the bags owner and TSA agents by surprise in this picture coming up? And social media product pitches that can be dangerous. We're taking a look at some of the ads targeting the most vulnerable. That's next on the News at 5. Here's what we're working on for you tonight at 6 o'clock. A mother now left without her son this Thanksgiving. San Antonio police say that he was killed in a hit and run crash, and now there is a reward out in this case. Tonight we're talking with the victim's mother. And concerns of construction cutting into business along the St. Mary's Strip. The day after our story on this aired, contractors are now promising to make several changes. But is that enough? We check in with business owners. That's coming up on the News at 6. They pop up in your Facebook feed ads, including some for supplements with incredible sounding health claims, but it goes farther than that. 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moore. It says these ads have been found to target vulnerable people pitching products that could be dangerous. 
Their Facebook ads about boosting brain power and curing insomnia. We found ads and posts that promoted the use of some supplements that are dangerous or even illegal. Um, for example, we found a series of posts from a verified Facebook page that promoted the use of Comfrey, which is a dangerous supplement. Consumer Reports investigation found some ads targeting certain people. We found some ads that targeted people who Facebook thought were interested in diabetes awareness, and Facebook was allowing marketers to put ads in front of those people that marketed things like uh, a reverse diabetes kit. And of course, medical experts um, say that supplements in general can't cure or reverse diabetes. New Life USA took down that listing. Its CEO said he thinks people with diabetes should continue to work with their doctors, but also said they should wean themselves off medication. They also found dangerous supplements for sale on Facebook Marketplace, including Kratom, which the DEA lists as a drug of concern. Facebook said the Kratom listings violated their rules, and most Kratom listings disappeared. But even if the ads are removed, that might not solve the bigger issue. So unlike a medication, for example, where uh, trials, clinical trials have to be presented to the FDA before something can be approved and be sold, um, these supplements might end up on the shelves. They're not going through a filter beforehand. In general, you should check with your doctor before trying new supplements. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Check this out. This is what TSA agents found at New York's JFK Airport. A guess at what it is? An x-ray caught the outline of a cat inside that suitcase. Now, surprisingly, the owner of the suitcase doesn't have a cat. The what? Pet, yeah, the pet actually belonged to somebody else, but in the same household. That traveler had to miss his flight to take the cat back to its owner. Now, the animal is okay. The cat appeared to be taking a nap and wasn't bothered at all by this whole experience. Cats. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> Cats. Take a live look outside with live cam. This is Sky 12 over Travis Park. As you see the HEB Christmas tree right there in the center and the ice rink, the Rotary Club ice rink. The big lighting is on Friday. Yeah. So everybody paying attention to not only the Thanksgiving forecast, but all the Christmas festivities right around the corner, Adam. Oh boy, you said Friday? outside for the lighting yes mm -hmm. okay uh, oh, not going to be ideal okay. i'm sorry right. yeah we, we have new information now we've been able to measure this system that's dropping in more and getting new data and f just take a look at our rain chances here tomorrow uh, fairly scattered to numerous showers by friday i think it's just going to be one of those rainy days off and on rain throughout the day rain coming and going day and even on into the night on Friday. That's when I think we'll see actually the bulk of the real moisture and rainfall I anticipate being Friday. Thursday, mainly just more dampness with some light activity here and there. Okay, here's the setup. We have the low cloud sprinkles already, some reduced visibility west of town locally. You go off to the north, we've got this swirl dropping into Denver and some moisture coming in off the Pacific up above us with that some energy, of course. These two systems are gonna come together right over West Texas over the next couple of days and then slowly push, e push eastward. Give us some good soaking rainfall incrementally. So let's take a look at the future cast. We're going to go very slowly here. 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, fog, reduced visibility. I think some dense fog out there. Visibility is under a half mile in many locations. That will be I think, pretty persistent all the way through the noon hour, even some spotty light showers to mix in with that fog and drizzle activity through the noon hour. And then later on in the day, we'll start to see the visibility improve tomorrow afternoon and evening and the showers become less numerous, so not as much rain actually falling the second half of your Thanksgiving day. Then we get into Friday and get ready. That's when we should have the bulk of our energy and moisture in place. And it's looking like just widespread numerous showers, even some embedded downpours, maybe a crack of thunder here and there. Notice 6 a.m. Friday, pretty widespread. We keep going through the day and it's just these passing areas of rain. Just when you think of the just typical rainy day, that's what it's going to be on Friday, basically. Right now we have some reduced visibility, but it's not that bad, not a whole lot of dampness, just a light sprinkle going over the airport. Notice our dew point at 55, air temperature at 60. They're gonna to come together tonight and that's gonna to mean some fog pretty quickly. I think by 
8, 9 p.m. You'll notice the fog and drizzle again out there. Here's our future cast for visibility. Notice 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, a half mile or less. That's going to be the case. So if you plan on hitting the road even early tomorrow, you want to beat the crowds, beat the rush, beat the traffic, you're going to be dealing with dense fog, drizzle, road spray, and wet roads. Once we get into the afternoon, notice here the drizzle starts to become a little bit, not quite as persistent. So tomorrow morning, wet roads, reduced visibility. By the afternoon, not as many showers. This is going to be warm and humid, near 70, still fairly cloudy, noticeable humidity. And then tomorrow evening, just a few stray showers. Again, the worst travel will be the first part of the day, but then just some little isolated or to scattered showers for the second half of the day. Friday off and on rain. This is the best way to put it a rainy day, windy as well. This weekend, that's when we'll have sunshine 60s Saturday and 70s on Sunday. A lot to watch in that forecast. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Spurs have some things they really need to work on if they <laughs> want to stop this losing streak. Larry. Yeah, we know what Greg Popovich preaches. Yeah defense and the Spurs are not happy about their defense on their recent West Coast swing. So that's their big focus defense and in big game coverage. The Smithson Valley Rangers are getting ready for their next playoff opponent coming up. It is game day for the Spurs who will tip off a three game homestand tonight with the Pelicans, followed by back to back games with the LA Lakers. The Spurs are riding a five game losing streak. Their last win was back on Friday, November 11th, when they beat the Bucks 111 to 93 at the AT&T Center. After that, they went west and they lost to all five teams. You know, yesterday, rookie Jeremy Sohan said he didn't like the defensive effort on the road trip. Five year vet Kata Bates Diop agrees. Yeah, we definitely have to improve defensively. I think that's pretty, pretty obvious. But it's the little things, you know, you know, we're a young team where we've been, most of us have been around long enough to pick up habits, you know, the right things to do and to do those things for the full 48. We do it for stretches, you know, pretty much for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but it's a 48 minute game. We have to do the entire game. Spurs will host the Pelicans tonight at 7 at the AT&T Center. All area high schools want to practice Thanksgiving week because that means they're still in the high school football playoffs. The 11-1 Smithson Valley Rangers are still practicing and getting ready to face 11-1 Fulcher in the Class 5A Regional Semifinals Friday in Seguin. The Rangers, who are in the third round for the first time since 2015, got here by beating Cedar Park in the first round 30-7. And last week they defeated Manville 30-28. Now they're looking to take the charge out of the Chargers. I've always wanted to practice on Thanksgiving because you know it's you're playing for something big and this is the goal and this is another step all the way to state. It's just a privilege and a blessing. Uh, we have a really good team and it's a lot of credit to all of us and just being able to make it this far. But we're not we haven't gotten what we want yet. Uh, it's special for us, you know, we work so hard to get to this moment from spring ball all the way to here, and uh, we're just ready for it. We work so hard, so. We're ready to go. You know, our program's done this a number of times before, but it sure doesn't get old because, uh, you know, it means you've achieved something. Obviously, you're still playing. There's a handful, only a handful left, and uh, you're one of them. So that part's neat. You know, they've done it, I guess, once before, and not not last year. And uh, you know, they've they've got their eyes on a big prize. And uh, uh, while the third round is not the ultimate, it is a step to the ultimate. And uh, But what they know and what they've already knew, but certainly are realizing is uh, it gets tougher each week and this week's certainly no exception. Smith and Valley and Fulcher will play Friday 1 p.m. at Matador Stadium in Seguin. Go Rangers. Yep. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. That's all our time. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.